This is an experimental class. So just so you know, um, the similar class like this was, I was presenting a similar class uh, in Seattle and at the Unreal Fest. And after doing that class in Unreal Engine, I thought to myself, hey, you could probably get away with most of these things in Blender. However, there are some howevers. And I'm going to go through all these. And uh, hopefully, this can be an interactive class where I just don't show you uh, like you know, how great I am or whatever I've been doing. It's more about you and you taking out of this class what you need for a cinematic pipeline um, and working in real time, because that's the thing that I really, really want to push uh, in Blender. And I think it's the future of the production, virtual production in general, to have it running in real time. So uh, I'll start this class off with an actual demo. Maybe you've been familiar with, the, with, the, with this software, but maybe not. Um, you can grab all the materials for this class uh, that I'll be sharing along from here. So just grab this link. Uh, that's a Trello board where, where I'm going to have all the links here, sample files. You can grab them, download them, and just have fun with this. Uh, so I'll be updating this even after the class. So be sure to just subscribe to this Trello board where everything will be there. So just a few words about me. So I just don't want to take too much time of your precious time where I come from, where I'm coming from for, with all this to you. So I've worked with rappers. I've worked with cool people that uh, generally wanted to get as much from the engine as they could. Now that happened uh, over a year ago and it was not possible to do this without Blender. That's what I want to say, that making, creating these animations in UE5 uh, two, three years ago was not possible without Blender. Now it's a little bit changing, but it's still Blender is always my go-to software where I want to do, do all these things. So I'll just jump through this. I've run uh, live VP classes and conferences where I teach how to use uh, virtual production in an interesting way. In this case, it's a green man in a suit pouring a drink, right? So during COVID, I, I've, I've, this class here is an iteration of these kind of experiences that we'll be, we'll be going through. I've also helped agencies with uh, virtual production support in general, trying to get them on board with virtual production. Um, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of pushback, but I would be the guy who would be, you know, hauling in the PC into their studio and showing them, hey, you can do this in real time. So MetaHumans in VR, that's another thing, great project. Um, also, without Blender, not possible. All of these things without Blender would be not possible. There's always one thing happening that's part of the pipeline that has to go through Blender. It's just the way it is, right? Also, world building uh, in 2023, uh, uh, hosted by Epic, was a eye-opening experience for me. I learned all about, um, yeah, I'm going to talk louder a little bit, sorry. Um, all about creating worlds in Unreal Engine, and a lot of artists also work in Blender uh, for the conceptual thing before they bring it into Unreal. So it's very interesting. Now, to finish off of all this, the Animation Fellowship was brought all, the, all of this uh, together, where I had a, like a, a class of 100 people, like here, but online. So it was, uh, it was a whole different experience. But we've basically pushed through this and teached online the same kind of curriculum. And a lot of VR and AR experiments uh, back in 2014. I went viral for this crazy thing for just strapping up a GoPro. And last thing, acting in mocap. Acting in mocap is fascinating. It's a whole, whole world. Um, and I want to touch on this because in Blender, it is possible to do this. Um, and I want to show you what are my approaches and how, I, how, I, how would I go about do, doing something like this. And also, last thing, Blender and AI, um, taking a head and applying AI to it, it just results in a cool thing um, for rappers, right? Rappers love these things. All right. So let's jump into Blender, right? I don't want to take, like, don't want to take too much time and just, like, this is a class, right? We should be doing things. Um, so last year, I took this, this amazing 3D scan that I'm really proud of still till today, uh, where I run around the whole conference and ask everybody to sign it. But this is cool, right? But I want to do something interesting and just something different, right? Um, so let's start off with something called Omni, Omniscient. 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 Om, oh, sorry. Omniscient. Now, I'm not an affi um, affiliated Omniscient Blender with any of these plugins, 
However, they're one of the best plugins. I've, I've researched a lot of these uh, camera trackers, generally things that are able to do these kind of things. And I'm just going to show you everything that I use. And it's, it's just a great thing to, to um, have shortcuts. Have, have a lot of shortcuts here uh, if you're bringing uh, these kind of experiences into uh, Blender. So let's get it. Let's get going. How do you install the, the plugin? How do you get going? Well, let's get our plugin. Uh, now, installing plugins in Blender has been a, a breeze. Now you just get get out on and drag and drop this guy, and it will. If you don't have the add-on, it will automatically request you to add that add-on. So I'm just going to check here that I have that add-on. All right, we're all ready to go. So let's hide this guy, go here. And uh, we'll start with a simple import. So the, the whole plugin that you can grab from the um, source files that are provided if you don't have an iPhone uh, and want to test out, test out this workflow. But generally, the whole process is just importing this file. And let's just go to our, where I downloaded it. So just quickly grabbing that download. This will be all happening in real time, so don't worry. Uh, and I'll hopefully be able to show you on my app how it looks because this is this looks on the phone because it looks kind of amazing on the phone too. So let's just quickly extract this. So you get one file, and that's your interest. But if you look into the folder structure here, there's a whole bunch of files here that come with this, which is, um, yeah, I'll just import it. You'll see how it works in Blender. So double click. And this, oh, this saves so much time. I'm just sorry, like, uh, to do this before was kind of, took a whole day, uh, just to get everything synced up, everything working, and, and uh, in that sense. So, it's essentially, let me just hide this mesh, this scan, for now. Essentially what this plugin do, does is it maps up a, a whole, um, let me just hide this also, this cube so it doesn't get in the way. There we go. Um, it essentially allows you to do two things, or three things at one time. Scan an environment, capture your camera in real time, and also use this footage already composited into Blender in one go. Now this comes in like this, and we can work on this now and try to um, make this more interesting, right? Um, now I work in a cinematic pipeline uh, just with real-time tools. I really like those real-time tools that they jump into this, they go into this, and I can start iterating, right? So let's have a look here. Now we have this plugin already installed. This is, by the way, this app is free. The only, I think, uh, the, the, the pay thing that gets you it's 4K and also automatic uh, and exporting to Unreal Engine and, and stuff like that with USD. Now, with this project, um, I'd like to bring in some characters um, so I can have like a character here, right? Um, because right now it's just, <laughs> it's just this. Uh, let me just quickly go to my tab view here so we can have a look at the plugin folder. So it usually comes here with import EML, um, and I can also do some settings here uh, that would enable this. Let me just get this a little bit bigger. You can see more uh, of the UI resolution scale. Yeah, much better. So there's a use shadow capture, use holdout, all that. Let's add an object, right? Because that's kind of what we're what we're here for. We want to add some some kind of cube for now. So right now, let me just. View this selected. Mm, grab a cube. Nope. View selected. All right. Just move this up here. 
we'll delete this cube for now. Scale this a little bit down. Just want to place it in the scene so we can see it somewhere here. Um, while I'm doing this, by the way, I want to do some stop because I want to do something. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to right here. I want to do an experiment. Um, every time I clap, or you clap, I'm going to clap together right now, uh, is one year of using Blender. All right? So how long you've been using Blender, I'm going to just start clapping, all right? All right? I want to just get a, a hand. I'm, I'm going to start slow. So try to calculate in your head how many years you've been using Blender and just clap. If you've been using one year, that's one clap. If you've been using it 30, 20 years, then it's 20 claps, all right? So let's try to do that. All right, three, two, one. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh my God! Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh my God! Twenty-one, twenty-two. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of people here that has much more experience than we all are here. So some some people clapped once. Uh, I clapped eight eight times. That's about since two point eight got released. I think so. So uh, yeah, it gives a. It's humbling to be here because there's so much experience here in Blender and I'm kind of struggling to put a cube here. But here's the thing. I, wanna, <laughs> I really want to uh, showcase you these kind of tools and the way I work through uh, the USD pipeline also because that's another fascinating thing that I've just uncovered and, and been using it because I hate FBX. FBX just drives me crazy. It takes too long to download. It's a, it's a pain in the, in, the, in the butt, yeah. All right, uh, let's have a look what we got here with our, with our setup here. So we got our dock here. Um, of, of course, this is no green screen, right? But the thing is, uh, if we would run this through a, some kind of AI green screen, we could remove the background, and that would enable us to replace this background with uh, physical objects. But we, we are already here, as you can see, with that cube tracking on, that, uh, on this floor, um, pretty far ahead, right? Because to get to this point, it usually took, um, yeah, um, a lot of time, usually, right? So the dog gets excited and everything. So all I did is just, you know, scan that environment all around, and that gives a great presence for Blender and us and our tools to just start adding objects here that are interesting. Now, I, already, I also have a second plugin that I really want to showcase, and I, I've just found so much fun doing this, uh, working with this plugin. Uh, and it's actually mentioned in the Trello. Let me just go back to Trello. So last year I did this talk in a full mocap suit and it was insane. Um, it worked. So right now I'm just going to use assets that I ha already have, so I don't need to dress up into a whole mocap suit. But there are some other um, innovations in, in mocap uh, that I kind of want to, uh, because I went from the high tier, the very expensive mocap, and ended up using uh, a Sony Mocapi, which is a low tier, um, not expensive ex essentially. Um, but let let's all right. Uh, but there's so much I could talk about mocap motion capture and stuff, but I just want to continue on with this talk. So shoot it. Shoot it is another amazing, amazing plugin that I've been using, and it es essentially helps us do stuff like this. And for a real-time cinematographer like me, I just love these things because they can they can bring so much um, more dynamic things to our scene, uh, and it happens so quick, like I say, with this plugin. So let's just grab. I already purchase this plugin and it's uh, it's what are we at a couple of dollars right so let's just let's just get this plugin and go to extensions do I have it enabled let's have a look no we don't have it enabled so let's just quickly grab it from the blender market uh, let me just log in here quickly Shoot. Oh go here to go to downloads no, all right got it already here which is good so just open this up and 
enable the plugin. So uh, when plugins come from the Blender market, um, uh, the official store, it's actually easy. So it's a drag and drop operation. But when you're doing add-ons here manually, you kind of have to go here, add-ons, install from disk, that change in Blender, in the new Blender version. All right, so just get shoot out, shoot it. And we're ready to roll, all right. So with shoot it, um, essentially what it does, is it enables us to shoot an object and then uh, set up intervals that spawn this object with physics, right? And this is really cool, right? Because I can, already having this scan here, um, I can add other things here from like other tools and add this as a passive rigid body, right? That done, right? The plugin does it for me. I could access all this and do it manually from, of course, the normal Blender tools, but for now I just want to do it quickly, right? So I would just set up here, go back to the first frame. Let's have a look at our cube here. And let's just fire off this cube. We'll do like nine cubes at an interval of one frame and just not care about the rest and just shoot it, right? So the object that's selected, it should shoot. And, oh, there we go. But we can see that well, what I wanted to, to showcase exactly isn't, much, isn't that cinematic here, but um, essentially um, working with this, let me just, yeah, the cube should be here baked out. Anyway, uh, I want to, because yeah, the camera is all over the place. Uh, I can, of course, slow this a little bit down with time remapping to, so we can see something. And oh yeah, a lot less, let's do a lot less force. Let's just try again this. There's also growth settings. Um, so let's try again. Um, actually, I need to add one more thing to make this uh, usable, right? And this is a force. So I'll go Shift A and create a new um, just go search and a force and this force should be a, a force that should attract everything and make it as close as possible so we want this to be a point with a big strength of let's say minus uh, let's say 3000 something like that so it attracts a lot and now let's have a look how our animation behaves if we shoot it all right, should be shooting. Let me go back, shoot it. Oh, I think I undo it. All right, let's try again. And now we should get, yeah, I think we need even more of this force. Actually, these cubes are just flying around here. Let's add a little bit like minus 7,000. All right, and now go back and see how that behaves. So you can see, what I, I usually with these simulations, it's a good idea to give it a little bit of um, time to, to, to get them into control, right? Uh, and then from there, you can continue. Now, the, the simulation is caching into 250 fa frames. So let's just make this a lot longer. So we'll just type in cache in the search bar here. Oh, I love this feature from Blender that you can search everything from the cache. And you can see here, uh, and 250, let's add this to, let's say, 2,800. And now we should be able to, if we just hit, and this is happening all the time in real time. I haven't actually baked out anything, and that's amazing, right? And it's, it's actually chewing through it right now, right? And it's really cool that you can actually, if your PC can handle it, you can grab these objects and start moving them around, right? And I really like this, this workflow, right? And just wait for the, you can, you can kind of control where your objects are spawning, where they're, where they're behaving. Let's go into the camera here so you can see them. Yeah, flying around my dog. So yeah, uh, just, to, just two plugins, right? Uh, and we already have a pretty complex scene, right? That I would, uh, if I would be doing this on my own, it would take me a very, very long time to get this set up and, and just essentially get going, right? So these are just, these are th these things, right? And how do you use this with characters now and also export this into, let's say, Unreal Engine? Because it's usually the case where I start in Blender and I create something and I want to move it into Unreal Engine. And then I find out that half of the things don't work. Uh, and yeah, 
So working around this is actually really, really uh, was was tricky for me. And uh, but these tools help me to understand how this works. So in order for this to be exportable, right, all these cubes, right, because they're right now being simulated, right, which is which is nice. But when I um, when I actually export this into a USD file, there won't be any animation. So let's just uh, so for the sake of time, I'm going to cut this into just so we have about 800 frames here happening. And we're going to hit F3 and go bake. Uh, it should be actually bake simulation. Um, just go select here these cubes. Now F3, uh, bake to keyframes. So we would bake to keyframes, just make sure we have that, uh, the range, 1000, and hit OK. And that's prepping up for us to be able to export this into a USD file and get it outside of Blender, right? With, with the animation already happening. So it's baking out this animation right now. And now we should have a nicely baked out animation. So having these objects selected, we can go now File, Export, and Universal Scene Description. Now, Universal Scene Description is a beast of itself. I don't want to go too much into it. I just want to show you how quick you can get stuff out and into, into Unreal Engine and have it play back, right? Because that's usually the case where you want to move things back and forward. So let's just grab here and just type in floating cubes, right? And just click enter. Now we want to do selection only. We want our, our animation also. And I, I think that's it. There's not much to this that we should add. Perfect. So just grab this folder and export USD. And that, that, went, that went quick, right? Wow, that's already there. Um, all right, so now let's say back in Unreal Engine, we want to bring, bring this quickly in. Uh, through the USD plugin, we we'll go edit plugins. Uh, this is a fresh Unreal project. There's nothing here, and go to USD importer and just enable this plugin. And we'll do a quick restart, save this, and just call it map. And that will restart Unreal Engine. Um, so USD files usually travel to Unreal Engine or maybe Omniverse. There's so many things that you can go and go and use. USD um, in a more robust way that I'm actually showcasing you right here. But it's good to just get uh, get a hang of it because I've seen so many 3D artists still get stuck in the FBX world, which is which is annoying when you when you actually have to work with this stuff um, and export big files and stuff. And for me, USD was a, a big game changer when I needed to export like a complex simulation. This is not complex, but there are mo many more things that like say a driving car and passing through these blocks and hitting them, uh, that may cause some, some, you know, some, uh, some issues if you're trying to export through FBX. It's just a, it's just a really, really um, annoying thing to do, right? So I'll just let this compile while this is happening. And I want to open up the floor to questions because I don't want, I don't like ending up a, a session with, uh, you know, and everybody ha and the next session comes in. So please feel free to fire up a question. Uh, anything that comes to mind we, we, after looking at this. Yes, yes, sir. So your question is, uh, if I use USD, can I export the animation with the materials? Yes. Correct. Yes, that's the whole that's the whole thing that USD offers over other formats. That it goes all. Is that is that, does that answer your question? Yeah. So it, it it will travel with everything, and I love that because it's just one file and it has everything. Yes. Another question. Can you export other? Camera tracking, yes. USD also will grab your camera and put it into a sequencer and it will export. Um, so the camera track uh, is, a, is a camera and you can either export it through FBX, which is a, 
uh, standard, I would say, of doing this, but also USD, and that will work too. Uh, I'll show, once Unreal Engine just quickly loads up, I'll be able to showcase how easy it is to export cubes or with the camera itself. Actually, I'm gonna add a camera to your question, because that's a good question, right? Uh, so I'll grab that camera here also, select it, and now go export. Hopefully it's selected, right, with shift, control. Actually, you know what, let's get the whole thing. I'll just hit A, why not, and see how that goes. Um, and go universal stream description and just do this, oh, and do all, right? And selection only, blah, blah, blah. We're good to go. And we're just going to go Control C, export USD. Boom. There we go. And now back in Unreal, once we have enabled that plugin, that's the one thing we need to take into care. Once we have that plugin, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, in window, you go to um, USD stage editor. Sorry for the small fonts. File, open. And now just select our USD, USDZ file, USDC. We can hit escape here. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, it can, one more time, that actually wants it. Uh, we'll create a new cache, all right, save. And now um, we should be able to see somewhere our sequencer, hopefully. So we'll just go file, import now. It asks us where we would you like to import these files. So I'll just go here, add a folder, and go import. And that drops that cube into here. Now in Unreal Engine, uh, just so you know, if you haven't worked with Unreal, there's level sequences. And this is our Blender track that came through USD. Um, yeah, there you go. And it's flying in Unreal. Now, we get a lot of downsides here. The video doesn't come through. Um, a bunch of things doesn't come through. Like uh, if you look at the uh, mm, specification of this of the of the software, uh, Blender uses all of it. So you have video, you have everything all together. But here you have this. Just uh, you, 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 I just wanted to showcase how easy it is to work with USD files now, because this usually should this usually wasn't the case uh, in Unreal Engine, or at least in talking to Unreal Engine through this pipeline, it would just break down, it wouldn't show up, and now I can say confidently that this is a work working tool. Um, any more questions? Yes, please fire ahead. I, I, I have a few more minutes to go. Um, we have a 50 minute class, so please. Yeah, question. Right. Uh, could you uh, repeat the question, please? You, you imported uh, only the default cube, not the USD file that says all. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good point. Good point, sir. And let me try again then. Uh, so we'll go to, we'll do it, just we'll do it again. We'll go window. USD stage editor. File. Open. Oh, yes, you're right. And now we'll hit open. See what will come through. Yeah, the scan should come through now, which is nice. We don't have to worry about all that. And that comes from Blender. So we'll go file. And now before we, we can actually do stuff to this, we'll just add a new folder. Always good idea is to add a folder for every import you do with USD. So it just doesn't uh, get in the way. All right. And now we should be able to source our sequence, create it in Blender, right in USD, and shift space to play back. I think, yeah. I think this is the old cube still. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, so this is the, so you, as you can see, we, are, we are not getting video. We are not getting uh, all the cool stuff uh, with compositing that, that, that happens through, uh, through Blender. We would have to set this up in, in, in um, in Unreal separately, but that's a whole different class. Uh, we're here for Blender, right? So, but anyway, what I want to want to what I want to leave you with uh, food for thought. Um, working with cinematics in this in this um, 
in this realm is is exciting because if, I've never had the possibility to actually have things happen in real time. And when it comes to, uh, if you're a developer, uh, I want to leave you with a untapped um, software here that doesn't exist in Blender. There, there's no possible way to stream live data unless we use some kind of VRM, crazy technology, um, to actually have it working on a character. For some reason, um, there's no way to actually stream the data. Now, Mocopy, which is um, Mocopy, Mocopy SDK, provides a very nice little piece of software called the BVH Streamer. Let me just zoom in here. So there's a bunch of things for Maya, Unreal Engine, Motion Blender, Unity. Where's Blender, right? Yeah. So we go to BVH Sender, grab the BVH Sender file, and from here, quickly download, save, got it. BVH Blender. BVH Sender. BVH Sender. There we go. Let me quickly load up this application because it's, it's actually interesting. Um, so we get this. We can select the BVH file. Uh, normally, you import and do them and stream them live. But from here, you can just hit start and that will stream this data. So currently, uh, the only way to receive this data would be a crazy workaround through VRM, and uh, it's called C, yeah, C, C face VRM, I think. VC face, yeah, so VC face actually supports um, um, virtual cameras and, uh, and external trackers like This is a whole mocap suit, right? That's why I'm, I'm just excited by this. The whole mocap suit comes in, that's the whole thing, right? Six trackers. So if you really want this to happen in real time and stream into Blender, it doesn't exist. Um, right now, the only way to get this, the, this is just to import the normal um, BVH file into Blender, which works as follows if we have enough time. But I think we're, what, what, how much time do we have left? I think we're it was 11.30. I think we have so much time, some more, some more time left. I think I can squeeze this one in. All right. So we'll go to import and just try to import our character. Now, I have this Mokopi character here, which is the one that they provide. But let me just quickly uh, grab this one. And I've actually run it through Mixamo. And whenever you're importing any FBX files into uh, Unreal Engine, it's actually important to click these two things, ignore leaf bones and automatic bone orientation. And for some reason, yeah, scale will be fine, right? So I'll just hit import. Yeah, this comes in weird, right? That's, that's the thing, right? It's always, now with USD, this does not happen. So it's always that thing though. Let me just go here, automatic armature. And I think that should be better. Okay, got it. And now we can go file, import, and go and grab our BVH file. Now, I wish I could stream this live, and but the only way to do this currently through into Blender is to use uh, Rococo. Rococo um, software actually uh, should be able to stream data from um, any character into this, the, the system live. Um, let me just, we'll see how that goes, right? We'll, I'll, I'll do a quick demo because why not? Uh, I, I always like demos, they can go always wrong. But let me just quickly quick this and while, I, while this is downloading, I'll grab that BVH file also. There we go. And this is the sample BVH. Now with BVH, for some reason, we need to scale it down to 0 0.01 and check all these boxes. Uh, scale FPS loop, I like that. Uh, update the FPS scene and everything. And that should put this guy into, into here, which works. So we get our animation kind of set up here. 
and uh, now we have to retarget it. Now, retargeting, to be honest, is much easier and faster right now in game engines. But if you really, really wanted to do it here, you can. And just select the root bones, build the bone list, and that should automatically build this bone list, and you should be able to retarget this animation. Hopefully, it's going to work. Duplicate bone, target found, one torso, zero torso, one. Uh, yeah, so this is, so for some reason, the root causes this issue. Let's try now without the root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we get some weirdness probably. Yes, as expected. Um, <laughs> that should not happen, but that's because it's missing, I think it's missing the root bone for some reason, and I would have to add that, so I won't worry about it right now. So you can see how annoying it is to work not in real time, right? You get stuff like this all the time. There's something not working, there's a bone missing or something. But if we do it in real time, let me just undo this, uh, and hopefully it will work this time. Oh, it's asking for an update. Okay, let's go for it. But anyway, that's the only way to do it, either Rococo or crazy VRM software. So if you are a developer, I highly encourage you to take a look at the uh, Mocopi, Mocopi SDK. Uh, preferably not in Japanese. And from here, you, you can download this um, and have a look at it because the receiver plugin is already there. So all we need to kind of build is the plugin that will receive the data and we, we, we could record it directly to a character, which would be, would, be, would be really nice if we could do this right now because, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of workarounds right now. Are there any more questions? I'm just kind of talking here. Uh, yes, the question, question, no? There's not many more questions, that's fine. Question. Yes. Do you meet uh, some problems with USB keyboards to scale up the, the blender inside Unreal? Usually no. That's my answer. I always had problems with FBX, GLTF, all of that would just go randomly in scale. While for some reason USD um, just works. It doesn't mess with my scales that much. And that's why I use it mostly, because then I don't need to guess, hey, does it, did this come in the right scale or not? It's, yeah, it's a whole bunch of things, right? So let's quickly, I, I, I won't be able to put on the mocap suit too much. It would take too much time to, to actually get set up here, but I'll just quickly, quickly sync up a high fidelity animation that I've recorded before. And you can use Mocopi in Rococo Live, which is, which is really cool. And by the way, uh, Rococo, unfortunately, is a subscription-based software. However, the Mocopi, uh, Sony, soft, Sony hardware, actually, that there's no subscription. And it's the only mocap suit, I think, that doesn't have any kind of subscri subscription, which is, which is nice, because you can buy it and then just work with it from there. Yeah, this has to sync up through the, through the cloud, and hopefully we should be able to just quickly add this character in and stream it into Blender. So the, the mocap suit, if you're wondering, looks like this. There's six trackers, ankle, wrist, ankle, wrist, head, and hip. And they all come on with these little straps here. And you can put them in different places, right? I'm excited about this, like if I could put this on my dog or something and re-rig it through uh, Auto Rig Pro. I think they released a whole bunch of rigs for dogs. That's why I'm talking to you developers here to create a plugin that I, I won't have to go through um, yeah, a bunch of things here. So this was recorded on a super high fidelity with the Coil Pro, right? Which is, uh, which takes care even of stuff like uh, hand placement, right? So the actor here was actually using a real driving wheel. So his position is exactly how it's supposed to be. The same goes for gaming, right? Say you're, you're, you're playing on a game pad, which is really cool. Uh, and you need that little detail of those fingers right happening. That's when you would use these kind of high precision coil 
technologies, right? Um, so let's just let's grab a animation here that I can use. Um, something, let's say, oh, I like the dog pet, right? Because I got maybe dog pet. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, this is like actually using a phone. Yeah, that's, that, that sounds good. All right, so let's we can export this from here uh, and go into uh, a Mixamo skeleton, and that should work um, if, if we have the Mixamo skeleton there. So just go export. Sorry? Oh, th these come through, unfortunately, always through FBX. They come out of here through FBX, so there's no USD. USD usually comes from Blender into other software. It's the, it's the best, or from other software into Blender also. Um, but for some reason, characters um, mostly are using still the FBX pipeline, um, which is, yeah, it just, as you can see, it just takes time to export, time to import. There's a bunch of things that you have to kind of do. Um, come on, come on, come on. Let me, I, I wanted to show, show a shorter animation, but oh, why am I exporting? I was supposed to do this in real time. Oh my God, let's go back to streaming. Um, let's activate the Blender thing, right? Uh, let's just make sure we have our settings here. Forward IP, that sounds good. We're doing this locally. So we'll just hit activate, move, to this, move this to the side. Grab Blender and start receiver. Um, start here, this guy. And actually, oh, let's try again one more time. So we'll do we'll copy. So what, if we're sending the data here, I know it's a little bit tricky, but we can pull through this. Uh, Rococo, Rococo. So we'll just get rid of this cube. Start receiving, right? And I think there was one more other thing that I needed to do to get this character to show up. Mm. No. Yeah. Um, interesting. I'm probably missing one thing. Do I have the newest version? Yes. Um... Yeah, that's the thing, right? It just so if some developer can solve this, that we can actually stream from a simple BVH like this thing, right? Because what, what we're seeing here, like this, is a very complex piece of software that's doing a bunch of things, and I kind of don't need to do that unless I have it in Blender. But to get it into Blender in real time, that's where it comes in the tricky part, right? Um, maybe I'll I'll be able to showcase this, but. Yeah, um, essentially it's, it's not that easy to do because it's something to do with the ports or something to do with just... Uh, okay, let me just click here. One more try. Start receiver. Ports are different. Ports are different. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. For, so we got 43 here. Oh, 53. All right. Thank you for that, sir. 43. Uh, the thing with live demos, all right. Uh, receiving no data, all right. Oh. Oh, activate. Yeah, got it. All right. Start receiver. Is it? Does it? Does it nudge it? Uh, receiver 43. That sounds good. So it did work before when I tr tested it. So you should be able to stream this character into here, unless I need to actually add a character here, but I just don't kind of remember <laughs> right now. Um, so I encourage you to just play around with this because it's, a, it's one of the tools that you can do st things in real time uh, in Blender. Um, I just don't know why it's, oh, oh it's getting the, new, oh, I think I know, I know, I know, I think I know. It's getting the Newton character, so something is happening. Um, let me just quickly, as usual, Rococo Blender uh, documentation. I think there's one checkbox that I'm missing. Um, references, right. 
Uh, no, not this one. Coco plugin. It's always fun sh solving these things in real time. But I remember that there was one checkbox that I needed to check here um, for this character to get going. Actually, let's import a character. Yeah, we'll copy character. Just roll with it, right? We'll copy Unreal. All right, and we'll now go here. Okay, here Rococo Life setup, actor, Newton. And I think that's it. That was the one checkbox that we were missing. Uh, automatically detect actor bones for supporting. Okay, let's do auto. And set typos. I think it detected some things, but they're not all the way there. Naming conventions. Well, I can't get it to go. Um, it's something off. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, stressed out by this, but generally it should work. As we, but you can see that streaming to Blender isn't a actual solved thing yet, and I encourage anybody to to just play with this, right? Because it's um, it's something that's untapped, and now with the new release of Vulkan, um, Blender is is a real time you know power beast right now that can that can handle most of these the, the things that I've been doing in in Unreal Engine or other software I could be able to do it in Blender uh, at least in the virtual production world right. Um, all right, um, is there anything else? I'd, I'd love to wrap this up and and, and just give it a a little um, you know. Um, if you'd like these animations also, uh, I'll be sharing them on Trello. So make sure you add that little Trello board after the conference, because I always like to leave people with a bunch of things that come from uh, this. So I'll be sharing motion capture data, a bunch of other examples and projects right here. So please feel free to jump in. And if there's, I can see there's some uh, people, so I'll just quickly add them. Thank you so much. And yeah. Thanks.